Struck the tree. I stared there for, felt like 10 minutes, couldn't see a thing. A visit to Swedish Lapland feels like a step back in time. You know your neighbour. The roads are empty and the semi-domesticated livestock thinks it owns the place. With us inside the Arctic Circle is Neil Rowntree, deer manager and crofter. He is here to find out how the locals hunt. Why there's such a high approval rating for hunting here, 88% and what the UK, and in particular Scotland, can learn from the wildlife that thrives here, and yet struggles back at home. Let's start with the king of the canopy, the capercaillie. To us at home, we consider them critical, I and mean, a lot of the conservation charities are making a huge fuss about capercaillie. They've spent millions of pounds of taxpayers' money. But are we shutting the stable door after the horse bolted? First of all, Neil needs to check his blazer. It's a drilling, a blazer D99, a hybrid combining rifle and shotgun. It's not a thing you see a lot of in Scotland, but uh, this is the blazer D99. It's got an old 7x57 calibre. When I say old, it's a calibre that was very common in the Highlands years ago. And in the landscape here, when you've got a lot of woodland cover, it's a good, heavy, reliable slow round. When branches and twigs and that get through the way, it's a bit more forgiving than some of the high-speed rounds. Okay. Stunning weather. It's not often we get days like this to try rifles, so we'll uh, <laughs> we'll give it a go. See how we go. Take a rear defenders because there's uh, no moderator on this, as you can see. And what hearing I've got left, I'll try and hang on to. I like the safety mechanism on it, so the weapon's not going to open for you until such times as you take the safe put the safety on. Okay. To be honest, very sweet to fire. Oh, I don't think there's any issues there, David, do you? Oh, goodness. Oh, I'm of the opinion that for 100 yards, it's absolutely spot on. But when the weapon's closed... With us is Mads, a Danish away. fishing guide, That's now looking to use both rod and rifle. But it gives you the option to hunt all sorts of game with just one weapon. So that's the beauty of them. With the rounds touching and Mads on the money, Neil's happy and it's back to the Jokfals, where we will be based for the majority of our stay. We've timed the trip to coincide with the end of the Baltic salmon season, the start of the bird and moose season for a Swedish McNab. Time to meet our black grouse and capercaillie guide. Felix and his two Finnish spits. Neil has never hunted with dogs like this. I'm looking forward to it. I've never seen this before, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. Hey, it would be good fun, this. Hopefully we found, found something. And... So the, will the dogs now just sort of hunt the road or around the, this area here till they pick a scent and then follow? Yeah, follow with the sight. Like yeah. We don't see the bird. They will stop and listen. The dogs um, will? Yeah. yeah. And I can hear up to 500 meters. Incredible. And that's, after that, that's the, the test is to find which tree. Okay. So, and when they get to the tree, they use all, all the senses. They smell the eyes and the ears. Incredible. So, Good to go? To see which tree is. So you, when we're looking for them, we're looking at them, looking at the bird in the, in yeah. the tree? Just yeah, just follow the, see where they're looking, which tree. That's the, it's almost impossible if you don't see the dog. I just try to find it in the tree without it, though, then... No chance? No. no. Okay. Not happy. No pressure, then? Oh. <laughs> it's an eyesight test for an old Scottish gamekeeper. It would be fine. Yeah. I think, yeah. Whatever the Swedes are hunting, and regardless of who they're hunting with, dogs come first. Always. It doesn't take long for Felix's two-year-old to find a bird. 
Felix can usually work out if it's a black grouse or a kappa by the behaviour of the dog. When I was a kid, kappa Cayley, and I'm not that old, kappa Cayley were abundant and uh, they've practically disappeared. But the further north you go and you come to habitats like this and the climate's still similar to what it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago, they're here and they're thriving. So with these guys harvesting forest grouse, they're having no negative impact on the population of any scale and they do it to feed themselves. And, and this is what we're talking about. When you want to restore habitats and you want to have people live in harmony with the land, then uh, it's making a wise use of a natural resource and that's what guys like Felix are doing. He loves it, he, lo he enjoys eating oh, it. The, you can just yeah, tell, the passion good. just goes out. Yeah, it's yeah. good. <laughs> three, three times we've asked him today, what do you do with woodland grouse, Felix? And he's going, I eat them. Simple as that. Finally, we get a bird that's holding. We crawl into position. This technique is different to the one we experienced last year with Paul. That was using pointers and walking straight towards our quarry. This time, it's stealth. But then you have to be able to spot it through all that greenery. Felix does his best to direct, but Neil can't see it. Until it takes off, of course. It be hard to see it. Yeah, incredible. I couldn't see that at all, David. But then it, when it moves, like, oh, for crying out. Yeah, as soon as it moved, I thought, Jesus, it's right in front of us. And this was actually quite easy, yeah. easy bird, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pitch black in the tree. Felix, I was looking here, uh, and it was up there. Uh, yeah. A black bird in a green tree. tree. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. OK, oh. you made your point. Yeah. <laughs> the blind Scottish guy, yeah. I now have to apologise to clients over the years who've stalked deer with me and gone, I can't see it. And I've gone, you're blind, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no excuses, except I couldn't see it. That's the common thing when you're new in this hunt. Yeah. You, the hard thing is to see. Now, as the weather is above 10 degrees, we can only hunt at the beginning and end of each day. The dogs are built for cooler weather. On the way back to the car, Neil asks about ticks. He feels the success of the grouse here could be a non-existent tick burden, which plagues our birds at home. Do you see many of these, Felix? Uh, not up here. On uh, our dogs, me and my girlfriend Ellen, we found maybe one, two or three each summer. But when you go to the coast, then it starts to be yeah. much, much more. Because we find in some areas now where the woodland grouse chicks are, uh, people pick them up and they're literally covered in these things. Okay. Never seen it on them. No, not the, on the See, uh, that's got to be significant to their survival as well, because for us now it's a big problem. Ticks, yeah. ticks everywhere. If you went and walked through an area like this yeah. at the moment in my area, you would maybe have 20 or 30 ticks on each leg. Easily. Oh, I'm happy we don't have them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that they are small when you forget the leash. <laughs> I forget the lead. Okay. First impressions? Fascinating. Dog work, brilliant. I'd never seen uh, a spitz in my life, far less even one work, so I enjoyed that. And uh, it's harder than I thought. <laughs> what can I say? I have no defence. It sat in the top of a tree and I could not see it till it took off. Okay. So was, thankfully, you've got a few days. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm learning. But it's terrific. I mean, we're surrounded by Caledonian pine and uh, we're in the heart of Swedish Lapland. It's, what's not like to like about it? We've been invited here. They're promoting tourism and encouraging people into the area and uh, it's nice to be involved in the culture and meet the people. Maybe we should do more of this in the UK. After lunch at Jokfeld, it's our evening excursion. Felix uses his older dog. He's almost seven years old. Yeah. This is the dog that teach me how. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she barks, we stalk. There is no way Felix would allow anyone to take a bird without the dog in play. You're very much focused on doing the best with your dogs. So if, for example, a grouse landed here, having been disturbed, you wouldn't shoot that grouse? No, no. Why not? Tell me. Not because... The Probably that the dog has chased chased it up from the ground. 
Yeah. I always, always wait for a dog. But okay. if the dog comes and start barking, and it's at the right tree and everything, everything is yeah good and in place, then I shoot. Okay. okay. Otherwise, you never, never shoot. And it's so the dog understands it has to be at the right tree. Yeah, right yeah. tree. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you can get the dog that moving around a lot and not, don't really pick a tree. Maybe if moving around to five, six different trees. Okay. And then it's difficult to get anything in, in your bag. Okay, understood. So basically it's for your long-term success. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. As we lose the light and another bird, Felix finds himself with an opportunity. He decides it's too tricky for our travelling Scott and because he feels the dog needs a reward for all her hard work, he takes it. Okay, Felix, tell us what we're looking at here then. It's a uh, wood grouse uh, born this year, and this is the best meat that you can get. Yep. Telling you that. So we're going to eat this guy? Hopefully. Yeah. Maybe Robin can cook something. Cook and make something out of it, yeah. It's an old trick uh, that all the ones used to. I learned from my dad. If you want to know if it's a real <laughs> old one, now we can see if yep. it's a uh, young one. But then you can grab it here and you see this cracked really easy. Yes. So this is born this year. But the real old one, so you can hold it by here. Yeah, and it won't break, yeah. Nothing at all. We used to a similar in the grouse here, you can feel it at the top of the nose. Yeah. yeah. If you put your nose here, you can feel it soft. Yeah. You've heard this one too. No, no. Take no, your thumb yeah. and put your finger to the top of the beak here, where yeah, my thumb is, and you know, bend it. Yeah. Feel it flex? Yeah, yeah. And again, a young bird. They do it with red grouse, they pick it up and say it's a young bird. No, so similar idea, right? Yeah. Day two and we know what we are doing. When they're when they're lacking, I've got them on the yeah. yeah. Horse of the forest. The horse of the forest and go with the copper coyote. Copper coyote. The copper coyote because of the horse. Yeah, because of the noise. Yeah. Cool. Neil's experience in the forests of Scotland means his eyes are not just on the treetops but the forest floor too. At home, browsing pressure decides red deer impacts. Mm -hmm. So does poo counting, but only if used wisely. The thing about uh, dung counting that's important is that uh, you need to know how long the decay period is. But whenever you use dung counting, the important thing to remember is it's not telling you the number of animals you've got. It's telling you the number of animals utilising an area. So this is classically the case. That's the dog starting to bark in the background. The moose probably did this some time ago. And you could say the villain of these droppings isn't in the area at the moment. <laughs> so it, it's, it advises. It doesn't give you exact numbers. And maybe in the UK, this is where we're having problems. We're thinking that equals total number of moose. That equals total number of moose that were here at some point. Mm. Big difference. Yeah, yeah. So it could be a lot of shed. <laughs> <laughs> We're off in response to the dog. In the distance we see a flash of tail to guide us. Neil gets into position and finally spots a bird. For the camera and shot cab, it's just a sea of green. Oh, calm down, Neil. Struck the tree. Struck the tree. Calm down. Struck the tree. Bastido. You see it sitting there, David? It's clear now because it's taking the branch. Killed him that time. There he goes. There he goes. You get that? Yeah. Whew. Nice. 
I got a bit nervous after the first one. I shot the branch and the branch flew away. Yeah, yeah. And the bird's looking at me. <sighs> that is not called. Felix! That I will sit like that. <laughs> Bye. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Yeah, no problem. This is not easy. No, it, it's not. <sighs> that is not easy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Trying to film it. Couldn't oh. see it. I could not see it. I'm sure I hit him the first time. You didn't go far. Yeah. <laughs> Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl, Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl. Appreciation for you. Delighted. Oh, There's somebody that enjoys their job. Yeah. Wow. This is a baby from this year. Yes, yeah. Oh, well grown. Yeah. Uh, Normally, hand is very much on the wheel. Yes. And totally in control of you were shaking. I was shaking. Yeah, I think <laughs> you could. Yeah, that's you could. Uh, yeah, you could both see that. Yeah, but you know, the day I stop getting excited about hunting, I'll stop hunting. Yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's the whole thing about it. Yeah, delighted, guys. Well done, David. Well done, Felix. Well done, you. With one bird in the bag and heading back to our kit, which we dropped off before the stalk, the dog is on another, just 40 yards from the last. It came down though, I saw it coming down. 50 yards back in cover and the dog pinpoints the kappa. Neil grabs it and makes sure. Oh yeah, good that the dog went back and find Yes, him. yeah. Hey, you were right. You were right. Hold on, a left and a right at Cabra Cayley. <laughs> Not what you expect every day. Is the left and a right allowed to be 40 metres? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bit strange. <laughs> it's been an unusual day, yeah. yeah. I'll let you hold that for a minute while I make this thing up. <laughs> so now we can have a proper Cabra tea. Yeah. <laughs> enough tea. No, enough, enough dinner for all of us, yeah? <laughs> how, much, how much meat will we get from this? Enough for a meal for two or three? Yeah, yeah, from both. From both. Now we have three. Now we have three. Yeah. Now everyone can eat it, yeah. Yep. Good. What a fascinating couple of days walking the forests of Swedish Lapland in search of the biggest member of the grouse family. It's an environment and climate in which it is thriving, and Neil feels that is why they will never return in numbers to the highlands of Scotland. I think tragically it's increasingly a temperate climate and it's a subarctic species so I, I think the dice is heavily loaded against the kappa. I think what we have to do in, in modern conservation is rather than think of rewild we have to think of a new wild. They are the possible of what will prosper in our climate and it's going to be a change not only in birds and mammals it'll be a change in trees and, and, and probably in, in the way we use the landscape and survive. But here has been like time travel for both of us. I mean, species that we, we've heard about and that are cherished in our history and culture are abundant. We, we've seen coveys of capricale chicks on the road repeatedly, and these are well-grown birds. But the guides have all said to us, no ticks, repeatedly, virtually no ticks. Good insect hatches, good dry summer conditions, and abundant berries. I mean, the vaccinium is everywhere. You and I have been walking about filling our pockets with blaeberries and eating them. And it, it's, a different, it's a different habitat to what we're used to at home. We have to accept that now, don't you think? I think there's a, there's a degree we have to accept. We've had a huge impact on this planet and things are changing. 
and I, I do believe it's an art, of, the art of the possible. I think to try and arrest history and go backward is romantic, but the climate is pushing us in another direction. Next time, it's moose, different dog, and different rifle. To discover more about the wonderful outdoor experiences that Swedish Lapland offers, check out the Heart of Lapland website and one of their top destinations, Jogfall, known especially for its salmon fishing. For more information about the Blaser D99 drilling or any of the Blaser clothing worn by Neil in the film, go to blaser.de.